Hi, there's a very quick lesson on stuff you've done before, so I figured this is something we could do at home. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> anyway, angles, arc lengths, and sector area. I gave you a sheet in class today, uh, and just kind of follow along, and you can fill in the blanks and work the problems at the end. Uh, first, we're going to talk about angles and how to measure angles. Um, just like you can measure lengths in different ways, you can use feet, meters, or all kinds of different ways to measure lengths. You can measure angles in different ways. The way that you're used to measuring angles is in degrees. Um, <clears throat> that's what you're used to. You, can, you know what degrees are. If I said a 90 degree angle, you know exactly what that is. Uh, if there are 360 degrees in a circle, um, and of course the, the unit for degrees is the, this little thing. Um, that's how you denote degrees. You just put a little degree symbol up there. The other way to measure angles that you're not quite as used to is radians. And this is what we use in MAP. Um, <clears throat> if you are taking a science class like physics, your angles are going to be in degrees. If you are in MAP, we're going to do angles in radians 95% of the time. Um, and the reason is because radians are considered real numbers, where degrees are not really considered real numbers. So uh, we're going to be dealing with radians more often than not. And just like there are 360 degrees in a circle, there are two pi radians in a circle. Um, it's kind of weird, but that's how many radians are in a circle. And there is no symbol for radians. With degrees, you can put a little degree symbol. With radians, you just have to write out the word radians. Um, <clears throat> so there is no symbol. Uh, converting one to the other. Um, and the way we're going to convert is kind of the same way that, that you've converted in science. Um, just for example, to kind of get you in the conversion mode. If I said I wanted you to convert, uh, let's say I had four feet, and I wanted you to convert that into so many inches. The way that you've learned to convert in science is you would start with four feet, and then you would multiply by some fraction to make the conversion. And the conversion for feet to inches is I know that one foot is 12 inches. And then the reason we write it like that is because it allows us to cancel units. Cancel the feet. Uh, 4 times 12 is 48. So we would know that there are 48 inches in a foot. Uh, <clears throat> converting from degrees to radians is the same thing. You just have to know the conversion. Um, and uh, what you need to know is that there are pi radians. If a whole circle is 2 pi, then half a circle is pi radians. And half a circle is also 180 degrees. So there are pi radians in 180 degrees. Uh, so if I want to convert from degrees to radians, what we're going to do is multiply by pi over 180 degrees. And so that will convert. Uh, for example, let's say I started with a 45-degree uh, angle. And I wanted to convert that into radians. What I'll do is I'll multiply by pi divided by 180. <clears throat> and you could even think of it as canceling units. The degrees cancel. And you're left with 45 pi over 180. And when you simplify that, that would reduce to pi over 4. So that's how we're going to convert degrees into radians. And like I said, there is no symbol for radians. So you can write out the word radians. And that would be how you convert. Uh, going the other way, if you want to go from radians to degrees, it's the same idea. Except we're going to multiply by 180 over pi if I want my answer to be less than degrees. Um, so let's say I started with an, a radian measure of, let's say, pi over 3. If that's an angle in radians, which it is, if I want to convert that to degrees, I would multiply by 180 degrees over pi. That's my conversion for radians to degrees. Uh, the pi's will cancel, and you're left with 180 degrees over 3, which reduces to 60 degrees. But that's how you convert from radians to degrees and vice versa. <coughs> Um, and then the last thing in this section is arc length and sectors. Um, what we're dealing with is we'll have a circle, and we're taking out just a little wedge of the circle. Um, and I kind of wish I'd given you a blank for this, but theta right here, theta is what we call a central angle. Um, if you remember back from geometry, that is what that's called. But that's a central angle. Uh, the arc length. The arc length is the length of the arc from A to B. It's just a small part of the whole circle. And the formula for arc length, the formula for arc length, sorry, I had to cough there for a second. Um, the formula for arc length is, we'll say S represents the arc length. It is simply R times theta, where R is the radius. So maybe I should label that in there too. 
so the radius of the circle times theta, that's how you find your arc length. And you do need to remember that theta, the angle theta, is always measured in radians. Um, so if your theta is given to you in degrees, then you have to convert to radians before using these formulas. The area of the sector, we just did arc length. The area of the sector, if I want to know this area of the gray region right there, the area is 1 half r squared theta. And remember, theta is still measured in radians. r is the radius, and that's the formula we're going to use for arc length. So those two formulas you need to know, and then we have these conversions to go from radians to degrees and vice versa. Um, so there is, basically, those are the notes for this section. Um, that only took five minutes. And then I wanted to go through and uh, go ahead and work out these um, problems on the back of the sheet with you, where we're going to convert uh, first the angle measures, and then we have some arc length and area sector problems at the bottom. Uh, so converting these, we start with the 135 degrees. And remember, if you're going from degrees to radians, we're going to multiply each one of these by pi divided by 180. So 135 over 135 uh, pi over 180, and then we'll reduce that. Um, and you could think of it as canceling the degree units, so I'm left with radians. <coughs> and 135 pi over 180, that will reduce to... 3 pi over 4. You can punch that in the calculator, um, but that reduces to 3 pi over 4. Um, so 200, we'll do the same thing. If I want to convert 200 degrees into radians, we'll just multiply by pi over 180. Um, then I'm going to do some canceling before I multiply this. Uh, I know the degrees are going to cancel. Uh, 10 goes into each of those, so that would be 20 pi over 18. Um, and then I could actually reduce that a little bit more. 2 goes into each of those, 10 pi divided by 9. So that would be 200 degrees in radians is 10 pi over 9. Uh, the last one, a negative angle, which we can have negative angles. That just means you kind of open up backwards. Um, we'll talk about that later. Multiply by pi over 180. Um, cancel. Uh, let's see, what goes into 75 and 180? I know 5 does. 5 goes into 75 25 times, so that'll be negative 25 pi. 5 goes into 180. Brain fart, I'm going to have to work this out. 5 goes into 180. We'll see 3, that's 15. 18 minus 15 is 30, that's 36. So 25 pi over 36. Does that reduce any more? Is that right? I guess it is. 5 doesn't go into 75 25 times. Goes in 75 15 times. There we go. Okay, so that reduced to 15 pi over 36. 3 goes into each of those. 3 goes into 15 5 times. And 3 goes into 36 12 times. So there we go. So that's how 75 over 180 reduces. So converting from degrees to radians. Uh, then we also can convert from radians to degrees, except this time you want to leave degrees on top when you multiply. So we're going to multiply by 180 over pi. And then we just start canceling. Uh, the pi's cancel. 3 goes into 180 60 times. 2 times 60 is 120 degrees. Do the same thing for 5 pi over 12. <coughs> Multiply by 180 over 5. Didn't I just do this problem? I'm sorry, 180 over pi. Boom, ba boom, 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 boom. Pi's cancel. 12 goes into 180 15 times. 5 times 15 is negative 75. So yeah, we actually just did that one in the other direction. But that's negative 75 degrees. 11 pi over 6, same thing. Multiply by 180 over pi. And reduce. Uh, pi's cancel. 6 goes into 180 30 times. 11 times 30 is 330 degrees. And there's our answers for this section. So you can convert from degrees to radians. You can convert from radians to degrees, which is what we just did. Um, and then we have the arc length and the area sector problems. Remember, the formulas are arc length, S. I don't know why we use S for arc length, but we do, is R theta. And the area of a sector is 1 half R squared theta. Um, I'm going to go through each one of these and find the arc length first. S, it's real simple. You just do R times theta. So that'll be 7 times pi over 6. So 
So the arc length is simply 7 pi over 6. Um, here, same thing. Find the arc length. It's r, which is 3 times 7 pi over 10. 3 times 7 is 21 pi over 10. That's the arc length. That's a 10. Uh, dude, this one's tricky because I gave you degrees for the angle, but remember your angle has to be in radians to use these formulas. So I'm going to have to go 75 degrees and multiply by pi over 180 to get it into radians. And that will reduce to, we've had 75 degrees a lot, 5 goes into each of those. Actually, 15 goes into each of those, 5 and 12. So the theta is 5 pi over 12. So if I want to find my arc length, S, that would be R, which is 5, times my radian, or my angle, which is 5 pi over 12. All right, so we have all of the arc lengths um, right here. 7 pi over 6, 21 pi over 10. That's kind of ugly. I need to fix that. All right. There we go. Uh, and 25 pi over 12. The arc lengths are a little bit easier. Um, it's not that the air sector areas are tough. You just have to do a little bit more arithmetic. The sector areas, I'll do those in red are half r squared theta. So that would be 1 half 7 squared times theta, which is pi over 6. Um, 7 squared is 49, so half of 49 times pi over 6. Uh, 49 is, I'm going to put that over 1 and just multiply straight across. I gave the sector for number 7, 1 times 49 times pi, so 49 pi over 2 times 1 times 6 is 12. So there's a sector for number seven. Number eight, I'm going to do the same thing. Area is one half <coughs> r squared, so that'll be three squared times theta, which is seven pi over ten. Um, so that's one half. Three squared is nine. I'm going to put that over one to make the multiplying a little bit easier. And then seven pi over ten. <coughs> and nothing's going to cancel, so area of the sector for number 8, 1 times 9 times 7 pi is 63 pi. Over 2 times 1 times 10 is 20. Then do the same thing for number 9. Remember, my radians, or my angle I had to change to radians, so that's going to be 1 half r squared. 5 squared is 25. Times my angle, which is 5 pi over 12. Um, and then we'll just multiply 25 over 1. 1 times 25 times 5 is 125 pi over 2 times 1 times 12 is 24. Um, so that's if you're given the information. Uh, something that I kind of wish I had done, but I didn't. Um, if I were to give you diameter instead of radius, just know you have to cut it in half. You have to use the, the radius. And then do make sure that your angles are always given in radians. <clears throat> if not, then you have to make the conversion. Uh, last two problems. Same type question, except I've twisted around the unknowns. Um, remember, number 10, we're talking about the arc length. And remember, the formula for arc length is S equals R theta. Um, and what I'm doing here is I'm giving you the arc length. The arc length is 3, so S equals 3. The radius of the circle is 5. So I'm giving you that much. I want you to find the measure of the central angle, theta. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug in 3 and 5 for S and R and solve for theta. So 3 equals 5 theta. Solve for theta. Divide by 5. And you get 3 fifths. Now, even though there's not a pi in the answer, it is still a radian measure. That is still a radian measure. The pi does not mean it's radians. It's... Uh, the lack of a pi doesn't mean we're not in radians. So when I solve that, even though I just got three fifths, which is kind of a nice number, it's still a radian angle measure. So there's 10, uh, 11, the same type thing, except here we're doing with the area of a sector. So our formula is one half R squared theta, and we just have to look and see what I gave you. The area is two, 
So I know A is 2. The central angle is 120 degrees, and I want you to find the radius. Uh, but remember, the central angle has to be in radians, so I'm going to take that 120 degrees and convert that to radians, multiply by pi over 180, and start canceling. A lot of stuff's a lot's going to cancel here. Uh, cancel the degrees. Uh, 10 goes into each of them, so I'm left with 12 over 18. 12 over 18 reduces to 2 thirds. So that's 2 pi over 3, and that's my central angle. Beta equals 2 pi over 3. Uh, and we're trying to solve for r. So r is unknown, and we'll plug these in. 2 equals 1 half of r squared times 2 pi over 3. <clears throat> and we need to solve this thing for r. Uh, since all of this is multiplying, even though that r squared is in the middle, I can still cancel this 2 with this one to leave me with 2 is equal to, I have pi over 3, r squared. I'm going to keep going to solve for r. I'm going to multiply by 3 over pi. Multiply by 3 over pi. It's kind of ugly. The 3's cancel over here. The pi's cancel over here, which leaves me with r squared equals... 3 times 2 is 6 divided by pi. Okay. And then I'm running out of room, so I'm going to move over here. If r squared equals something, my radius is going to be the square root of 6 over pi. Um, and you may be thinking plus or minus, but we are talking about an actual shape. We're not going to have a negative length for the radius. So uh, even though we do typically do plus or minus when we take the square root, since we are talking about a geometric shape, we're not going to have negative lengths. That's the radius. Uh, so that's everything that's going to be in that first section. This took 16 minutes. Not too bad. Um, so bring this sheet completed for homework, uh, for homework on either Wednesday or Thursday, depending if you're on first or seventh period. Um, and I'll check it, and then we'll move on.